One of the essential cornerstones of rowing is to be able to transfer linear energy from your legs and trunk into perpendicular energy going around the pins. Now, if you row on linear ergs all winter, your shoulders will become stiff because it's a linear overload of the spine. It's not, doesn't feel good, not healthy. You have this little, you see, ha, this little hiccups at the catch. This is when your hands go up and they don't connect, like a boat only, only benefits from horizontal connection. All right, ladies and gents, hello and a very warm welcome. My name's Arm, and I'm trying to explain how to engage the lat correctly when you row. So one of the most common issues I see with people when uh, they try to go for high watts is that they engage their shoulders way too early. Now, the typical signs you will see for that is um, an early arm bend, so it would look like this, or an early upper body rotation. The most important thing that we have to focus on is to engage the lat, latissimus torsi, to be very specific. And it's one of many muscles we use in rowing. The reason why the lat is so essential is because it stretches in right into the, the trunk. So it's, it, it's a large muscle overall, and it's the one that helps us to connect the shoulders with the remaining of the trunk. And the trunk itself is very important because it had a lot of weight. So in the rowing drive here, eventually, it's, it's, it's different from boat class to boat class, and it also varies in weather conditions. But essentially, you always want to aim for a force curve that has a bit of a plateau or a late peak. So looks like this almost. And the idea is that you use your upper body when you run out of leg motion to keep the momentum going. Because if I only did a leg drive and then the upper body, you would see I have a little uh, curve afterwards. So everybody wants to use the upper body swing because it is effective. So everybody wants to do this, but it's difficult to do it if you don't engage your trunk right at the catch. Now, everybody's being taught, so if you've ever been to rowing beginner's class or you're an experienced rower, one of the most important things that we teach, no, that is being taught to novices is at the beginning, you want to go with legs. And while you, do, while you push with your legs, you want to hold the upper body. And when your hands overlap or your knees almost run out of motion, then you swing with the upper body and then you pull your arms. That is true. But the question is, how do you transfer hypothetical knowledge, um, abstract knowledge, into something uh, where you know how to trigger the muscles? So it's one thing to look at visuals, but it's something else to understand how to engage the muscle. So we, we have the same product as an outcome. Now, what I found, I might be wrong, but this is just my experience. What I found to be essential is, uh, at the catch, to be able to control the shoulder levels, how high the shoulders are. I've done a video about shoulder work and rowing. If you haven't seen it, I will link it below, but I happily redo it. Um, I've recently watched a couple of my videos and I thought, ah, I think I can do a better job with these. So if, if you find anything that I should redo, let me know in the comments. I will take it seriously and, and, and work on that. So the idea is that the catch to control the shoulders. Well, in order to control the shoulders, we've got a, a variety of muscles available. One of the more important ones uh, is the pectoris. But the pectoris, you get a major, that's the big one, and a minor. And the minor is the one that connects, um, essentially, it's, it's everything around your armpit. So imagine where you start to smell bad after a long day. This is exactly the group of muscles you need to connect. So the pec minor, that's the one, teres major, that's a small one, on, which sits, sits above the, um, the lat. Um, of course, you've got the infraspinatus uh, in, in, in the back. But more importantly, we need to be able to make sure that we, we stretch the muscles we want to use a tiny bit before we come to the catch. And that's this one here. That's motion. That's the motion. And you, you shouldn't stretch it now. You should stretch it from three quarter to full slide. And the way it should look is like this. It's a motion where you can't even tell that there's a stretch. So it's a very continuous, a very continuous kind of motion where you slowly 
move your entire shoulder apparatus forward. If you want to engage a muscle during the drive, it needs to be engaged at the point of time where your legs now start to apply force. The question is, how does this force end up on the hands? If it ends up in a way where you do this, it's not very likely you will engage your lat. It's more a biceps loaded row where you are forced to bend early with the upper body. And you see the force curves, they create an early peak. So the typical force curve for that would be like this. That's actually a nice peak. I'm not doing a good job of faking this. So everything here and then nothing there. The thing is, I'm, I'm very conditioned to produce these flat curves because for me, that's the best way to, to move a boat. What you need to learn is how do you stretch the muscle forward? How much? In my opinion, not everything you've got. So if this is the maximum reach you can go for, 60, 70%. And when you've got the 60, 70%, then you want to work on um, a slow connection at the catch. So I've, I've done a video before, I will try to find it and link it as well. It's called, uh, there is no hard leg drive at the catch. I'm essentially embracing a, a slow catch. The catch is not a quick process. The catch is a very slow process because at the catch, we need to engage the right muscles, the small ones here uh, around the shoulder girdle and underneath and connect them with the legs. So the moment the legs start to engage, we need to make sure that we bring our arms in, pec minor. We have horizontal stability, teres major. We keep the shoulder blades engaged, infraspinatus. But then, once the shoulders are locked and low, then we start to engage the trunk, latissimus dorsi. And these muscles are responsible why you can hold the arms low. If you didn't do this, and you were loose shoulders, loose arms at the catch, but a hard leg drive, the, the product would look like this because the shoulders have no stability. So our hands would go up and our seat would move out empty. And that's what a lot of people do. So if you're being taught a hard and a quick catch with your legs, the result is going to be that you overwhelm the fine muscles we need at the catch. So once more, let me des des describe the process, how it works for me and my athletes. Going forward and then start the drive. The moment the drive starts, the force builds up through the body. You try to, it's almost a counter motion. So when the drive starts, it's, oh, I'm trying to bring the shoulders down. I try to bring my arms together, not with a bend of an arm. I try to lock my arms and then I connect. And on a bi rower, if you see the force curves, that's a signals mode on a bi rower pro, by the way, you have an immediate force pickup. If you don't do this, you have this little, you see, ha, this little hiccups at the catch. This is when your hands go up and they don't connect. The way it works on a bi rower is like a, like a boat only, only benefits from horizontal connection. There's a strain gauge that senses horizontal force. So every time you add a vertical motion, you see the force curve drops. I, don't, I pull straight with the same intensity and now the curve goes straight. But look at the curve on the, on the top, um, bottom. I go up, see this? Immediate changes in force because I, did, I redirect part of the energy I use to pull to go up. And this strain gauge, I mean, this is a 99% accuracy rate. So there's not much room for error here. So we can be assured that the blade will detect this as well, and there will be a loss of connection on the blade. Now on the blade, we can't really afford a loss of connection because then this water bubble, this imaginary water bubble in that pool of water, but the one we can actually have a grip on will be lost. This is what we call slip. And every time your force curves on the bottom go up and down, that, there's a bit of slip on the blade. Now, if you aim, that's now a tricky part, if you aim for quick hands and say, I just want to have quick hands through the drive, of course, a slip on the blade is beneficial, but it's deceiving. It doesn't make you faster, but we're 
slowly edging to a different topic and I, want, I don't want to do this. If you're interested in how to avoid slip on the blade, let me know, I happily do another video. Okay, in order to round up the video, um, let me do a quick recap on how I do it. This might not be perfect. Uh, I'm not a full-time rower, I'm a full-time coach and do you call it entrepreneur? No, I just have a rowing machine company that I built. That's a better term to put it. So at the catch, three-quarter slide, I aim to have a bit of a stretch on my lat, 70% or so, bit of terrace major engaged, terrace major tightens up a tiny bit because this is how I can get my arms out. And then I use my pec minor to engage, also major, but mostly minor, to engage with my legs together. Okay, maybe one last word on that. A lot of you guys row linear arcs, so when you pull on a bar on a chain. Now be aware that this has nothing to do with the rowing. One of the essential cornerstones of rowing is to be able to transfer linear energy from your legs and trunk into perpendicular energy going around the pins. Now if you row on linear ergs all winter, your shoulders will become stiff because it's a linear overload of the spine. It's not doesn't feel good, not healthy. In my humble opinion, it leads to a lot of injuries. This is why I started by a rower 22 years ago. And we need to relearn how to row around the pins. Because if you pull straight on something that can only go perpendicular, you're gonna waste a lot of energy for the means of tension. Tighten up. And if you transfer this way of rowing you learned on linear erg into the boat, you're gonna be screwed for two or three months. This is why it takes us a long time to get back into the rowing um, after a long winter. Now, if you live in Northern Europe or in Canada or Northern US or Southern Argentina, this is not gonna be your most favorite thing to do because there's a lot of time you have to spend indoors. So the idea is to teach the body to uh, apply energy in a perpendicular way. And this is where you need to pick minor a lot. If your shoulders, just a bonus tip at the end of the video, are not used to that, what you can do, but that only works on a bio rower, you do a cross grip. So essentially, I do something, take advantage of an effect called differential learning. So I reach out, I hold it across. It looks weird, really it does. But the interesting thing is that we, we step out of our comfort zone and we lose, we, we do something different than our typical muscle memory pattern. So doing this is new. What it teaches us is a lot of reach, a lot of mobility in the shoulders. And if you do this a minute or two and then get back to regular rowing, your shoulders have learned that, oh, okay, I need, I need mobility. But it's not like you move your shoulders in and out. This is what's done with locked arms and pike minor, teres major, infraspinatus. One of the essential cornerstones of rowing is to be able to transfer linear energy from your legs and trunk into perpendicular energy going around the pins. Now, if you row on linear ergs all winter, your shoulders will become stiff because it's a linear overload of the spine. It's not, doesn't feel good, not healthy. Do proper perpendicular drive, how to connect legs with the rest of the body at the catch. I happily do more videos than these. And if there are new video ideas and, and, and questions and topics and training planning and heart rate and how to do which, just let me know. I frequently scroll through the comments and I pick up new ideas for videos mostly because I read the comments. So, okay. I don't browse through YouTube and say, what is the video with the most clicks? So I do something similar. Um, I wanna provide substantial value to the rowing community with my humble means. So anything I can help you with, please let me know. Now with this being said, thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to see you in another video. If you want to learn more about the Bio Rower, the link is in the description. The website is biorower.com. And if you want to work with me, go to rmtraining.com. I offer Saturday live sessions where I coach you in a small group for 45 minutes every week. So there's going to be a lot of progress. I also write training plans for individuals, for clubs, teams, whoever needs to advance. And there's a training camp in June where I would love to see you join us in 
Vienna. Five Day Camp, armtraining.com has got all the infos. In my plans for 2023, I might be at the Euromasters Munich and I might be at um, Head of the Charles um, later this year in 2023. All right, with this being said, Thanks for subscribing and watching. Have a wonderful day. Share the video and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.